Hey guys, as a treat to myself, well, it was my 60th birthday. I bought another classic car, a Triumph 2500S. It's a saloon version of the Stag, basically, only a lot bigger. And all while Lady Throop was out shopping. In fact, I was waiting in the car for her in the car park at the time. And all I had to do was go on the website and have a look at a few photos of cars, which I'm very... Uh, careful to do. Um, now, I've bought the car, so will it end up being a darling or will it end up being a donut? But the day has come now to go get the car and after I've walked the dog this morning, her ladyship and I then have to travel 382 miles to Stirling in Scotland and pick up the 50-year-old Triumph 2.5 or Project Eddie, as I call it, and then drive her all the way from Stirling in Scotland down to Bournemouth on the south coast. It's 382 miles. Now it's been in storage for over two years and hasn't done anything at all so we've had some work done on the engine just in case but there's no guarantee I'm going to make that journey and if my track record is anything to go by it's not looking good at all. Also will Lady Throop be impressed with my new purchase and the 382 mile journey home of course. You'll find it all here. If you'd like to see what happened last time around a year ago with another car watch this video here. Right enough of this banter I've just realised I'm about 10 minutes late I've no shave or got dressed properly yet so i have to run home so uh, here we go <laughs> oh, at least the day starts early with a bit of exercise Harry the stag now many of you on the channel have been saying you're a bit bored with uh, registration numbers for the various stags and cars we've been working on and uh, I say fair play so uh, why can't we come up with a bit of a nickname so I'm going to do that for this one um, the registration is EOD 195 so it's quite an old registration number um, it's a beautiful kind of signal red I'd call it from what I've seen of the pictures um, color with um, black velour interior so uh, it looks quite up together and smart I think it's got a vinyl roof and stuff but uh, EOD 195 is the number so I'm gonna call it uh, Eddie <laughs> EOD 195 so meet Eddie or we will be meeting Eddie later and I guess being a female, that means it needs to be spelled E double D I E. So, uh, Eddie, here we come, watch out. And that's it, we've arrived at Stirling. There you go. Alison's somewhere there. Now, we'll put a mask on now, would you believe, because we've crossed the border. And being a car mechanic, I had to improvise. Steak and chips for dinner. Or we could go to Nando's. Nando's. Not sure about Nando's, it's a bit too modern for me. Steak and chips. And I'm definitely not going on that thing. So a good night guaranteed, suitably refreshed and off to the garage to go get the car. Definitely Scottish weather isn't it love? Just taking a shortcut, making progress. Bally, just following Google Maps. Yes, but we're taking a shortcut. There's some camel on the hill look, up the top there. Hiding hill. Honestly love, this is the easy bit. Oh, here we have two whacking great cannons, some marks on the old beheading stone where no doubt a few people literally lost their heads. And now to see the car. I can see out of the corner of my eye the nose of Eddie the S. Not sure if it's a signal red or pimento red but there she is in her glory awaiting collection. We'll have a quick spin round. There it is. Wow look at that. Very tidy. It is pimento actually. The photos um, look very different. They looked, uh, it looked more signal red from the photographs. But that's cool. It's uh, pimento red. It's the colour of uh, our other stag back at base before we repainted it. UNY 49M, which is now the yellow one. And there it is. So this always oh, even got a tow bar look. So it might even get us home with a caravan. You never know. And uh, EOD 195. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Morning. <laughs> and uh, nice to get the first compliment. There is the uh, renowned S badge. Bodywork looks okay. A little bit bubbly on the sills and the doors. As you'd expect, it's a 50 year old car, pretty much. Uh, standard uh, Triumph wheels. Um, lovely emblem on the front there. T500S and the badge. Look at that. It's awesome. A few little bubbles and bobbles, but generally pretty good condition, I think. Uh, odd bits and pieces to look for around the wheel arches, as you'd expect. 
looks okay uh, and has been stored for two years as we know and uh, a lot tidier than the other one we bought a year ago there you go let's have a look inside I think it's open actually the first time we've been inside it and there we are there's the 2500 lettering and numbering on the uh, centre boss there very similar to a stag in terms of the dashboard layout it smells classic if you know what I mean um, black velour seats and uh, automatic Borg Warner gearbox I think it's probably a 65 in this one which is the later slightly larger box than the 35 which was in a lot of the early stags um, I'll look in the back Notice Allison has been very quiet. Loads of room in the back so we can get the in-laws in here and possibly down Pike Duke if he behaves himself and doesn't make it too dirty. The headlining has gone a little bit, only just from one or two places, a bit stained you expect bits and pieces like that but actually it's not a bad looking car, very tidy inside. Carpets look immaculate. Um, loving the door cappings here, look like they've been reasonably finished. Uh, period ashtrays of course. Looks like it's been used, obviously. 50 years, I'd expect it to be. Lovely clunk of the door as you shut it. Don't know how many miles it's done. Let's have a look. Okay, 90,931 on the clock. Uh, probably genuine. We'll need to check that, obviously. Um, I can actually pull the bonnet release on the different side to the stag. And uh, I love the, uh, the old black vinyl roof. Um, gone a little bit there, just needs a bit of gluing or whatever, but looks up together. Let's have a look under the bonnet for the very first time. And all I've seen so far, guys, is a picture of this. Rum, rum. So it's an inline six. Carburetor is all looking nice. John said he had a bit of a fuel leak last night, but that appears to have been fixed. And uh, yeah, looks like a new radiator, it's been refilled. And uh, he's been working on this for the best part of six months. Five, six months, new battery in there too. New hoses, I think. We had to put new hoses in because I think that blew a bit of a leak at one point. But uh, engine looks tidy, reasonably tidy under the bonnet. Um, no obvious signs of crash damage or rust. The uh, British Leyland badge, as you'd expect, on the front wing there. Uh, wing mirror, I think, was hanging off, so I think he's had to fix this passenger side. Nice parcel shelf, as you expect. Cabin looking really good. Wind up windows, not electric, unlike the Stag, which is electric. Fuel in here, evidently. Yep, that's all right. Whoop, logical. I'm not quite sure about the back end. All right. VOD 195. There we are. So we'll have a quick look under here. There's a way of doing this. Okay, there we are. Wow, look at that. Clean and tidy. That's quite a cavernous boot, actually. I reckon you get a few golf clubs in there. <laughs> Not that I play golf, it's a silly game. But anyway, there we are. But, uh, yeah, very impressed. But uh, there you go. Very, very good. Well pleased. All right, so uh, here we are. Finally got the Eddie DS. Fantastic. And as tradition would always have it, you know, we have to award ourselves a little Harry the Stag badge of honour. It's got to go into this car for the journey home. So uh, as we've done in previous events, I'm now going to walk around and put it on ours. So uh, follow me, Alison, if you will. Instantly, if you want one of these free of charge, all you can do is go on our website and um, leave your details and we'll send you one any, anywhere in the world free of charge. Um, it's all about sharing the classic dream and uh, getting excited about classic cars. So there we are, it's double-sided, so you can stick it on the inside. And here we go then, Ali, you got me? Let's film it. There we are. Um, so whereabouts will we put it, do you think? Round right about there. That look good? Yep. Does that fit? Maybe a bit further? There. Perhaps there, yeah? Okay, always work it out from the middle out. Get rid of the air. And there we are. And then, as is tradition, you say, Arry the Stag! Do that again, hold right. on. <laughs> okay. So go from there. Go on then. Video from here. Okay. So there we are. So you get all the, all the air out of it, so it all sticks up nicely. And then, as is tradition, once you've done that, you say, Ari the Stag! Or, in this case, Eddie the S. Okay, so uh, we've now taken ownership of Eddie the S. We're going to start her up for the first time now. Fingers crossed. 
hope it's okay because it was um, how many miles? 400 miles home, Allison? Something like that. And um, let's sit in it for the first time. Ooh. Okay, I'm in. I'm kind of in. Might just need to adjust some seats and whatever. Let's get the key in, the ignition. So again, similar to the stag on the left-hand side. Um, I guess there's some. There's a choke here somewhere. No, that's the fan. <laughs> there's the choke. Okay. Um, and as before, we need to just make sure we are getting ready to start it. So keys in now. Ignition on, as you can see here, with the choke out slightly. Uh, so that's choke on, and here we go. Hopefully, this is the first row stag with Eddie DS. Oh yes. <laughs> Oh, doesn't that sound nice? That's an inline six that you saw earlier. Not the V8 as in the stag, but just put the choke in a bit. There we are. Probably still a bit warm from this morning, to be fair. That sounds sweet than that, doesn't it? It really does. Let's have a quick look under the bonnet whilst we're on the engine, and then we'll go around the corner for the first test drive to see what's what. I know we had a look earlier on when, the, when we first got the car, but that was without the engine running. And here we are. So it sounds pretty, pretty good to me. Can't hear too much chaffing. Um, as I say, an inline six cylinder petrol. And uh, we've done all the electric, as I said, fuel there. Um, yeah, so fingers crossed that we can now make it home to sunny Bournemouth. Ladies and gentlemen, to your cars. All in love, comfy, she says. Let's go. Okay, so this is the first time um, we've got an auto box here, so we're in drive. Uh, not a big clunk like the Stag has, uh, so the coupling's obviously good. And here we go. Okay, so uh, first impressions, is it very progressive? feels very comfortable and uh, yeah <laughs> plenty of space in here that's the thing I appear to be on a housing estate now so we'll have to probably cut out anyway yeah so uh, three speed as you'd expect uh, reminds me of a stag a lot only it's a lot bigger obviously inside and uh, I think we'll have to cut in a minute and uh, try and find the Wallace monument because we're going the wrong way I think let me just do a three-point turn hey. Right, day two, uh, <laughs> finished at the hotel, we're now heading back down south, uh, loaded up. Some might say I'm a bit idiotic for doing this, but we're going to give it a go, aren't we Bally? We are indeed. We are indeed, yes, so uh, head south, here we come from Stirling, uh, fingers crossed. Okay, right, so day two, we're now off to uh, Bournemouth is the plan, it's nearly 400 blinking miles. Anyway, so uh, keys in, a little bit of um, choke and uh, let the fuel pump gather a bit of pressure. Can't hear any ticking, so let's see if we start. That'll be a good start, won't it? Okay, that seems to work. Yes, good, okay. Right, so, uh, what we've got to do, And do any of you think he's driving like an old granddad already? Leave your comments below and let him know. And stay with us to see if he actually makes it home or not. Go on, get on with it you silly old fool. Okay, so uh, so far so good, at least the engine started. No reason to suppose it shouldn't have done, but it did, so that's good. And uh, thank you to Premier Inn for a good couple of evenings we've had in Stirling. Highly recommend. Bayer restaurant, is it Alison? 
Bria. Yes. B E A. Bria. 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 So it was a beautiful day up in Scotland. We set off uh, fairly early in the morning, uh, aimed to get round Glasgow and then head south on the uh, A74M towards Gretna Green where we got married uh, a few years ago, about three million years ago and decided that we'd stop off there before then stopping in Manchester overnight and then travelling the remaining 200 miles home back down to the south coast. Um, fantastically uh, capable car, uh, was driving really nicely and everything in the garden was rosy. So the mirrors behind, or well, the rear view mirrors here on the wingers, aren't um, they work? But they're not. They're not. Um, you're not too dependent on them like you would be on perhaps a more modern car, largely because of these, you know, these bits here that are in the way, so you can um, see out pretty well. And then, well, um, we always thought this would be an interesting journey, didn't we? And um, we've done about 90 miles, I suppose, south of. Sterling, going fine, 60 miles an hour, pushing up to 70 on occasion, absolutely went fine. And then all of a sudden there was a massive bang and um, unfortunately I think we've lost the gearbox. I'm not too sure. We have um, oil everywhere and uh, no drive and we've luckily just cruised in to a little works area. So uh, we're now currently waiting for green flag. I'm hoping they're going to be able to collect us but it uh, looks like Unfortunately, we're going to have a trip home on the back of a low loader or similar. So uh, massively disappointed. It was out running perfectly. It really was. And then for one reason or another, it sounded like an exhaust pipe blowing. I don't know if that was a gearbox or what, but um, I can't get in there because it's so hot. But sounding, sound, it sounds like a gearbox has blown to me. And there's uh, trans fluid everywhere on the uh, inside of the bonnet. So. Um, there you go, so much for Gretna Green. I don't know, we're not going to get to Gretna Green now. Um, just waiting for a full phone call back from the from breakdown people, but I'll uh, keep you up to date. Such a shame. Eddie the S, giving us jip already. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, well, Alison, it's been a lovely weekend, hasn't it? We've had a lovely time. <laughs> and um, here we are, sat on the motorway, as you can see behind me in the 2500S. Um, the short journey we did have, I was very impressed. You're kidding yourself, Tony. Beach. She and is now, not happy. Um, thank goodness for Green Flag. If there's anything that I can say about this, the consolation really is making sure you get a Green Flag cover um, or AA or whoever you like, um, because in moments like this, they can really help. And what's turned out now is that despite our dilemma, where I'm pretty sure the gearbox is gone, um, we've got um, Green Flag coming out with a low loader to take the car back home to south, uh, back down to Bournemouth which is about 300 miles um, and they're also giving us a hire car to continue on our journey so um, Alison's going to get to see Gretna Green where we got wed and the thing is I've got um, deja vu here because uh, for those that watch the film check the link below uh, the trip to Anglia car auctions a few years ago to get the stag. I don't know if these Borg Warners are really designed to stand around for a while and then get going again all from um, from nothing. To be fair, this time I thought I'd learned. I thought we got the gearbox properly done. I know John's done a brilliant job, so I suspect there's something wrong with the box itself. The plan now is to get the car home, um, and Ari and I and a couple of Ari's mates are probably going to try and take the gearbox out at home and replace it if that indeed is a problem. It's too early to say for sure exactly what's happened, but that my money's on that. But obviously, we'll let you know. 
Now I suppose the only thing I can uh, say here is that um, in an emergency we were just so lucky. Um, I won't venture onto the motorway but you hear a lot about keeping left and everything don't you um, on the media. If you look down the road down to that bridge in the distance which is way away away that's where the gearbox went and we coasted almost a mile I would think here. Luckily there was this little turn in and we've turned into a little works access so top tip uh, from Ari the Stag and they say just get off the road because the um, hard shoulder is particularly dangerous. Um, another top tip if ever you get breakdown, don't know why I'm saying this but I seem to be doing it quite regularly later, is know your surroundings, know where you are. So we're on the A74 motorway heading south, uh, there you can see the nearest road sign which is uh, a mile south of us at junction 17 so I was able to let people know and I don't know if people know, I guess people do, these pillars are sequential so if ever you need to be rescued or you have to report an issue to the police or ambulance or you need rescuing in this case the unique reference 534 post 3 is actually you can see another one actually just underneath the sign further up underneath that'll be the next one so that actually locates you exactly where you are so in an emergency that's what the services want to know to come and hopefully rescue you in a safe way well, I think you can see there just what distance we've travelled without any power. We're only doing about 60 miles an hour and uh, now we're waiting recovery. The car is going home to Bournemouth, separate from us. <laughs> it looks so nice. Um, sad it doesn't work. We'll have a closer look obviously when we get to it. Looking at the engine, to me it's gearbox but until we get underneath it and have a blinking good look we won't know. But uh, anyway, there we are. Top tips from Ari the Stag and uh, imminently going to be rescued so we uh, haven't had to wait too long about an hour tops so well done green flag you're an outstanding company highly recommended if that helps anybody out there sorry love just you wait till i get you home Now I'm going to show you in just a minute or so exactly what happened to the car which was a great surprise in? so stay with it I'll show you in just a moment. Meanwhile uh, we had a great trip home we did manage to get to Gretna Green we had a night out in Stockport in Manchester where I enjoyed a lovely curry even though I was a bit sad and then the car appeared on a low loader the day after. And here it is returned back to Bournemouth in one piece a few leaves on the top the looks of it but uh, it has arrived happy days okay so a few days later i uh, got under the bonnet to have a look um, the car is a bit dirty as it's um, done a few hundred miles on the back of a low loader and um, if i open the bonnet now obviously everything is cool so let's have a Good luck underneath, we'll have to spin around. Um, we couldn't see much by the roadside as you know, um, but um, as I said, lots of um, transmission fluid and stuff. But what I did find down the bottom, you can't quite see here, it's covered in oil. Um, I can show you on the step of the house. Um, it isn't gearbox, it's worse than that. The engine is dead, Jim. Have a look here. This I found on a rail of the chassis in the engine bay and that for those that don't know is the cap on the bottom end of one of the pistons and it has it shouldn't shouldn't be that shape for a start um, should be nicely rounded there's normally some shells in there uh, where the crankshaft lies and this almost like an anti-tank missile is uh, part of the engine casing that's been blown out the side. So, sorry, <laughs> ladies and gents, I was wrong. It wasn't gearbox at all. It is engine, and we're going to have to find a new 2500S motor to put back in the car. I'm now in the market for an engine. If anybody out there knows of one, uh, we will, of course, be filming and showing you what happens. Uh, I didn't want another project but looks like I've got one. Now, if you like this video, be sure to check out my film on our trip to Anglia car auctions in the description below. 
Uh, give us some likes and some comments and subscribe, of course, for more Ari the Stag. And check out our website too for more off-camera shenanigans and to claim your free Ari the Stag badge of honour. Until next time, all the best and Ari the Stag.